In this lesson, we will talk about assessing forecast accuracy. Specifically, the key question is, what is a good forecast? We consider a forecast to be good if it is very close to actual demand. In other words, we want the deviation between predicted and actual demand to be low in magnitude. In addition, we would like our forecasts to be unbiased. That means we want to make sure that we do not systematically overpredict or underpredict demand. The good news is that we can actually measure the quality of forecasts, and the starting point for this measurement is the forecast error. The forecast error is simply defined as the difference between actual or realized demand, y sub t, and predicted demand in the same period, y hat sub t. Let's take a look at an example. Here we have a data set spanning 50 weeks, and we are using the last period demand forecasting method to develop in-sample forecasts for these 50 weeks. Let's zoom in and take a closer look at the last 10 weeks in this data set. Remember that the orange line shows the actual demand in each of these time periods. The blue line, in turn, shows us the last period demand forecasts for these same time periods. Now let's take a look at period 47, for example. As you can see, observed demand was about 400 units, while the forecast is just over 500 units. In other words, we have a forecast error of about negative 100 units. That is, the difference between true demand and the forecast. Of course, we can similarly calculate the forecast errors for all other time periods in our data set. Now, let's take a closer look at all these forecast errors. First, we can evaluate the average magnitude of our forecast errors. This mean absolute deviation tells us how far off, on average, our forecasts are relative to actual demand. Of course, greater values of this mean absolute deviation indicate that the quality of our forecasts is relatively worse. Now that we understand the measurement of the magnitude of forecast errors, let's also take a look at the measurement of bias in forecasts. As we return to our data set, we can see that we underpredict the demand in period 45. That is, our forecast, shown in blue, was lower than true demand. Likewise, we underpredicted demand in period 46, but then overpredicted demand in period 47, and so forth. As we look at all the individual forecast errors in our data set, we can now distinguish between those instances where we underpredicted in those instances where we overpredicted. In this particular case, the total extent to which we overpredicted is likely greater than the sum of the forecast errors in those instances where we underpredicted demand. This comparison of overpredictions and underpredictions produces the mean error, which is the measure of bias of our forecasts. So, let's recap this all-important topic of forecast accuracy. We are interested in assessing two key dimensions of forecast accuracy. The first dimension pertains to the magnitude of forecast errors, and the second dimension refers to the bias in forecasts. There are a number of different forecast accuracy statistics to assess either magnitude or bias in forecast errors. Looking at the measures of magnitude first, there is the mean absolute deviation, as we just discussed. The mean absolute percentage error, also called MAPE, is another measure of the magnitude of forecast errors. And then there are additional metrics, such as the mean squared error or the root mean squared error. In terms of bias, our primary measure of forecast accuracy will be the mean error. Whenever we try to predict future demand, it is critically important that we assess the quality of our forecasts in terms of both 
magnitude and bias so that we can compare the performance of different techniques and on a case-by-case -case basis choose those forecasting methods that we can be most confident in.